Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny. And I'm Matt. And our guest today is... Uh, Brian Saliba from Crowbar Creative. Excellent. And today we're going to talk about Rackham Vale. Did I pronounce that correctly? You did. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So this is a very interesting project. Um, most things for old school essentials tend to be very dungeon heavy, I guess you could say. Uh, but this is very different. Um, before we get into the details about it, uh, what was your inspirations behind it? Hmm. Um, yeah, interesting point about the, it's not very dungeon crawly. Um, inspiration, pretty simple. It's uh, the art of Arthur Rackham, um, who, who was a, a really famous illustrator of children's books and fairy tales and fantasy books a uh, hundred years ago. Um, he, uh, he, he rose to fame. He's one of the, the foremost members of what they call the, the uh, uh, golden age of British book illustration, uh, member of that kind of loose fraternity of artists and uh, just did amazing stuff. Just an incredible artist. And uh, I think to this day, his art really uh, stands out as unique and interesting. It, and he was super famous in his time. Um, as with a lot of, of artists from 100 years ago and more, they, they tend to be lost a little bit to obscurity. Uh, and so maybe some people are less familiar with him, but he's somebody who I uh, just always loved his work, always admired it. And um, I guess at some point I just, uh, it clicked, you know, wouldn't it be fun to stat these, these creatures up to create a setting in which all of these different illustrations, these, these fairy tale creatures and uh and creatures from old epics and everything else he illustrated create a world in which all those things coexist and what would that look like so it it really all came from him he's he's the wellspring from which this whole project flowed i had actually come across this book this uh, book on on my own and uh, i'd bought myself a pdf and uh and i'd read it it's, it's great i've always loved uh uh rackham's work you know uh, i mean thought his stuff is fantastic. So I was really excited to see what you were doing with it. Um, so my first question to you would be, what made you decide to um, <clears throat> set this in um, uh, old school essentials? Yeah, well, thanks, Matt, for the uh, support <laughs> so far. <laughs> uh, for me, um, uh, I wanted we, my brother and I wrote this together. Um, we, we wanted it at first, we were going to do a system agnostic campaign setting. You know, um, we weren't going to worry too much about stats and, and mechanics. We just wanted to create interesting characters and place write-ups from this collection of artwork. But as we got into it, we, um, we decided we'd we would like to have some kind of mechanics behind all of this just to make it easier to run so that some, a GM doesn't have to prep too much for this. And if, you know, it, it's nice if you have a, a book full of pictures and nice write-ups, but if then <laughs> you as a GM have to go in and, and apply stats to all of them, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. And one of the things, one of our priorities for this project is, uh, was to maximize its utility at the table. You know, to make sure that you can sit down as a GM and use this book. You don't, you don't have to um, create a, a bunch of crib notes that you actually, you know, a lot of setting books you get and these big tomes and they got tons of flavor text and all this stuff's going on. Great, beautiful, inspiring stuff. But when it comes to actually running it, you, you need like a separate book that, <laughs> of notes that you've taken for, okay, here's what actually happens in this room. This book. And, and we wanted to try our best to make sure that it still was, very usable at the table and so so we thought well gosh we we probably need to stat this up somehow and uh so a couple of reasons it, it landed with OSE one is that um I'm a big fan of of Dolmenwood um and this this setting I mean for anybody who's read this setting and for a lot of people who have who've uh been nice enough to comment on it have told us that it you know would fit really well within Dolmenwood I I'd played Dolmenwood recently and was very inspired by that setting. If you're not familiar with it, Gavin Norman's work is, he's, he's incredible. Um, just a really cool fairy tale, dark fairy tale um, setting. And so that was part of it. And then 
uh, Gavin Norman's also the creator of Old School Essentials. And so that seemed to dovetail nicely. And even had it not been the Dolmenwood connection, I think I would have gravitated toward OSE because it's, uh, it's just such a, an easily adaptable system. Um, whether you're, whether you're running 5e or any old school, old school system, um, it's, it's pretty easy to adapt. Uh, it's got ascending and descending armor classes. It's got backo if you want it. Um, <laughs> so it, it's, uh, I, I've found, I've run several things, not for OSE using OSE books. And it was always very simple, um, a simple conversion. And, and so that's why we landed on it. Was it, I'm just, I'm just curious, what was the art first and then that ins like brought in the, the ideas to create this world or was the world first and the art came in? Mm. Yeah, it, it's a great question. It's, um, it was the former. Um, it was definitely the art. Uh, we, what we did is compile a whole bunch of the art, way more than is in the book. And there's more than, I think, 100 pieces in the book. We compiled it all, looked at it together and just started making, just calling them and saying, all right, what are our, what are our favorites? What can we immediately think would make for a really cool monster or a really cool town or an interesting setting or whatever. And so once we had that down to a somewhat manageable number, then, uh, then it was time to say, all right, well, what, what is all this stuff? Um, and m most of his artwork since what he did primarily, um, I think this is fair to say, is, is uh, fairy tales and uh, um, fantasy works. M a lot of it was arboreal, you know, it was in forests and it was, you know, uh, strange elves and, and his trees are really famous. They're kind of uh, anthropomorphized trees with faces and things. So very little stuff that, that looks like a dungeon <laughs> so yeah. uh or, or that looks like in caves or anything so it, it really started with what is the art what do we have what is our our wellspring you know what are we drawing from and then what can we turn that into instead of i think had we come at it the other way and said we we really want uh a, um caves and we want uh to have this big dungeon we were run into a big problem when we went to find art for that place because they're uh at least from what i've seen you know we um so much of it is just outside you know on riverbanks and and in in mountains and t tons in forests so we we let the we let the book go and the design and the writing go wherever the art took it so that so this is about a close to about 160 pages um you have uh looks like the the first part deals with the, the settings and then a little bit about venture hooks and then go straight to the bestiary. Um, it, so when, when this book was finally put together, um, uh, it, do you see this as kind of like an alternative in a way to Dungeon Crawl? Do, do you, did you see that there was like almost like a need like, you know, for like, like not just underground exploration, but, but um, overground, is that such a word, uh, <laughs> exploration mm -hmm. for the system? I don't think we we set out to do that. Uh, I mean, that wasn't a stated goal. That there's plenty of dungeons. Let's create uh, um, something that is uh, above ground. Um, it so it's. It, but now that you mention it, the fact that that there aren't as many above ground things, especially maybe for OSE or OSR, uh, maybe that's that's a good thing. I, I think we were also we very much had Dolmenwood in mind in terms of Dolmenwood is, I mean, as far as I know, there's, very, there's not a lot of dungeon crawling. There's some in there, but you're mainly just in a magical forest. So um, uh, I think that, I don't think we, we were intentionally setting that up, but what we did do was create places where you can drop dungeons in um, that we didn't fill out otherwise, because it's, you know, it's, it's only its uh, zine size. Um, it is more than a zine in terms of page count. It wasn't supposed to be, but that's what <laughs> happened <laughs> when we started making it. Um, so uh, I think if, if people have, hopefully, I mean, if people have dungeons and towers that they want to run and they want a setting in which to 
link them up to drop them in this this could do that we have those there's like the pixie pit and the alchemist tower and the old keep um the copper mines are four i can think of that are i mean you know there's a lot of stuff that happens in mines there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of <laughs> modules for wizards towers so i think it, it they'd be easy to fill those in with existing stuff if if you wanted to I, I love uh, how like each section uh, has charts, so it, it's never the, the same twice. I love how that now I have an alternative alternative to, so for my players so that, oh yeah, you don't want to go to that dungeon? Okay, let's, uh, let's take a, a walk to the Stinkwood and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really love that a lot. Uh, what's, what's next for this world? Um, what, what are your plans? Well, uh, there's a whole lot more Rackham art. Um, I think if we wanted to, to do additional material using Rackham's art, there's plenty more. Um, I mean, there's, we have so many things we didn't use, um, art pieces that we didn't use for whatever reason. So there's plenty of content there for that. Um, I think probably the most immediate next thing for Rackham Vale will be uh, a, a full color hardcover, um, probably early next year. Um, it's something we've kind of been thinking of doing for a while. And our, our thought, our thought process process has been um, let's, let's see if there's actual demand for it, you know? <laughs> and at this point we've had enough people ask us if we're going to do that, um, that I think we'll, we'll probably do that early next year, probably just a limited edition run. Um, but it just, it, every time I look at the book, that's the thing that bothers me the most is that it's in black and white. Um, Cause the, art is is beautiful um in color uh we also my brother and i are working on a follow-up um that will be with a different artist but similar concept to an, an an artist from the past whose work is in the public domain um and uh she's incredible um and uh i mean i i'd heard of Arthur rackham um i've known mm -hmm. him for a long long time i'd never heard of this artist and she's mm. incredible um, so we're working on that now. Um, I'm hoping we'll be ready to launch that as part of Zine Quest, uh, for, I, assuming they're doing Zine, I just assume they're doing it. I haven't heard anything about it this year, but, um, uh, so that would be, I'm hoping we're going to be able to pull that one together, but we have, uh, we're, we're working on a licensed, um, uh, uh, setting right now that isn't like Rack Avail, but it's, um, it's kind of the thing that's taking the most, it's the priority. And uh, I think hopefully will be announced in the next couple of weeks, what that one will be. So I uh, also have a board game in development. So there's, wow. there's a lot in, <laughs> in the <laughs> hopper. Um, so uh, whether there will be more Rackham material or not, um, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I, right now my, I want to get it in the form that it to me is supposed to be in, which is color. And then uh, could, I don't know, it could be an expansion or something down the road, particularly if it remains popular and, and people are enjoying it. And, and we hear from them saying, Hey, we, you know, we've been running this and we want, and we want more, <laughs> we can do it. Um, but in the, in the meantime, uh, we're, we're developing a whole, a whole, probably too many things at once. Um, uh, different projects. All right, so, so one last question. Uh, was there anything else about the book that you wanted to share that we haven't asked you about yet? One thing that is was important to us in making it is since we're using uh, art that's in the public domain, it was really crucial for us to, to honor his legacy, Arthur Rackham's legacy. It, it, we really, the last thing we wanted was to be accused of, of uh, trying to make a buck on this guy's artwork because it's free. It's in the public domain. Anybody so um, we, we tried really hard to, uh, to make sure that, well, I mean, we, for one thing, we named a lot of the locations after uh, things in his life. I mean, the, the main city is Edithton. That's named after his wife, Edith. Um, uh, Lambeth Hamlet, he went to Lambeth Art School. Most of the locations, Chowcott Village, um, most of them are from his life. 
And uh, where possible, we also kept the names of the creatures. Uh, so the King of the Golden River, we didn't invent that name. That's the name of, of a story that um, that illustration is for. Same with the Leviathan. Um, there's a number of them where we just, you know, kept the name. And we included a biography of him in the back. But I guess um, that was something important to us is to hopefully um, use his art in a way that uh, fans of his will appreciate. Hopefully <laughs> he would have appreciated and help more people discover him. Um, and the other artists of the, um, of the Golden Age of British Book Illustration, because it's just, it's, it's, they're amazing. They're just incredible uh, in talents. Um, and if, if nothing else, uh, uh, if, if people learn about him through this book, and, and we've, I've heard some people say that, like, I've never heard of this guy. And then, uh, wow, he's incredible. Thanks for, uh, like, that means as much to me as anything. If somebody discovers him and realizes how incredible he is, uh, and buys a, uh, a print of his and puts it on their wall. I mean, that's, um, that, that was a, a big priority for us. And I hope, hopefully we've done that. I hope, I hope we did you right, Arthur. We were trying to. Well, I think you did. Um, I, uh, I've long been a fan of his work and I don't, I don't recognize all of the illustrations that you use. I don't know the stories they came from, but, uh, I do think that, your setting feels like it could have been illustrated by Rackham. You know, I know that you looked at the setting, looked at the illustrations and built the settings, but I feel like it could have gone the other way. Mm. I wow. feel like if he had read your book, these are the illustrations he might have written. He might have drawn for it. So. Yeah, I have to say Thank that you. this design for this is, is so well done that I was telling Matt this earlier that when, when, you, when I was pushed about when I got the email, when we got the email about this book, um, I, I didn't realize this was uh, a tribute to someone that lived a long time ago. I, I just figured, like, oh, the art's great. This is great. I, it fits well with the with the, the this fade, this this thing that's going on here. And then when I looked deeper into it and talked about, it, I was like, oh, this is this is a person, <laughs> Arthur <laughs> Arthur Rackham. Right, right. You know? <laughs> so that at that a stupendous job, definitely. Thank you. I, I, that that means a lot. Appreciate it. I know you guys see lots and lots of games. Um, so uh, that's, uh, uh, I, I uh, appreciate the compliment. Where would people find this? Uh, let's see. So it's available now at uh, our website, which is uh, crwbr.com. It's crowbar without the vowels. Uh, <laughs> and it's actually um, everything Rackham Vale is 30% off there through the end of the year. It is on drive through RPG as a, and on Crowbar, we have the, uh, the book. Um, and we also have the, the bestiary cards, which I'm not sure if you guys have, have seen, but we, uh, Oh yeah. So we did, a, we, we, we printed a deck actually I've got, we printed a deck of cards, um, that are in, that are full color, uh, for oh, each, wow. each of the, uh, creatures in the bestiary so it's you know card image and then the uh the, the entry stuff on the back so oh that's wonderful the, the 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 idea is so that you know it's one thing if you as a gm have a book that has lots of great art that's super inspiring but then your players don't get to see it um yeah. unless you you know pick the book up pass around so we thought that having a deck of cards you could say and then you see this thing um, oh, I like and there's it. no no information on the front, so they can't yeah. glean anything. But um, also just as a useful reference at the table. So, um, and the other thing, reason that we really wanted to do these is because, as you noticed, all of the book, the interior of the book is black and white. It's grayscale, and Rackham's art is such a crying shame <laughs> to to grayscale yeah. his art. His color yes. is yes. is beautiful, and so. You guys have seen the PDF, it's in color, but if you yeah. get the print book, it's black and white. That's a result of the fact this was part of Zine Quest. And um, so I, I really wanted to find a way to make sure that people who wanted print to see what these books look like, or sorry, what the illustrations look like in color, they have these kind of art plates. So those you can get at the website. Um, we also have downloadable, a uh, downloadable map. Um, 
and that big factions spread that delineates all that that you can there's a download high res version of that too and um so all that is on is it uh crwbr.com and then print on demand and pdf are available at drive through rpg and the pdf is also on itch um i think that's it i think those are all oh oh no sorry exalted funeral um oh, okay yeah ha- has the book as well um and they have the the print quality that you would get from uh my website from crowbar if you get the print on demand it's you know it's just not it won't be the high quality stuff right, same right. content just not the quality but yeah exalted funeral has it um so especially for those who live overseas uh, outside the u.s they uh they can offer much better overseas shipping than than i can um so that can <laughs> be a good option especially if you want the the higher quality printing um than you would get on on drive through excellent um and there's I also a also soundtrack comment. too if i if i was you. just gonna say <laughs> <laughs> yeah the the soundtrack is um my brother's a musician ah. who co-wrote it with me and so he and a, a a friend of his got together and uh as it was a stretch goal on the kickstarter to do a soundtrack and we hit it so they uh they did a 20, I think it's about 25 minutes. Um, and it's, uh, that's on YouTube and you can download it on, uh, from SoundCloud as well. It's just Rack and Bale, uh, official soundtrack or OST. And uh, it's really cool. I love, I mean, I love it. I'm biased, but it, it's just really. <laughs> no, no, I, I can vouch that the, it is really cool. Oh, you, you've listened to it. I have, yes. Oh, I listened yes. to it while I read it because I, I, I saw the. Oh, right. Perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It, w- it was in the it was in the PDF with the link, so I I listened to it on YouTube. It was great. Um, it uh, it was very invocative, uh, and yet at the same time, it was clearly background music. Right, exactly. Which is yeah. great because you know a lot of times people will say, "Oh, this is an RPG soundtrack," or "This is music and everything," and it's not really uh, you know, for it to be rpg music it has to be a very specific kind of music it's going to be yeah. good but yet not overpowering and it can't have too much variation because mm. you know as much as people say oh i'm going to put on track 12 for the battle scene we're all too busy to do that i can yeah, yeah, yeah. work i just want to put something on and leave it there <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, it's funny my brother is a singer um i mean yeah. he's, he's multi instrumentalist but he he, he is a uh I think would refer to himself first and foremost as a singer. And when we, when I f- heard the first uh, cut of, of the soundtrack, I loved the sounds that they made, but the vocals were very out front. Yeah. And uh, I, I said, Greg, I'm, um, I hate to tell you this, but like, I think we need to kind of just pull, pull them back a little bit. Cause this is, remember, it, this is meant to be in the background while people are playing the game, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. So it was, I think it was a little painful for him at first to have to go in and, and when he was mastering it, push the vocals back into the background a little bit further. Uh, Cause he's, he, he has such a great voice and, um, but he got, he agreed uh, once he realized that it's just, he, I don't think he'd ever master. He's recorded a thousand things. I don't think he's ever done mastered something and that uh, where he was, um, not prioritizing, not putting right out in front of the vocals. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, I can see that would have been yeah. pretty difficult for him, but I think he definitely <laughs> yeah. made the right choice. It, it, he, 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 uh, he came <laughs> around, yeah. <laughs> well, this has been great. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I will definitely be keeping an eye out uh, for the color edition. I'd love to get one of those. And uh, I will uh, we'll both be very interested to see whatever else you've co- got coming up down the pike. <laughs> we'll keep you posted. We've got uh, several really, couple especially really interesting ones that I'm, I'm I can't wait to to uh, announce. Um, hopefully, in the next uh, probably early next first thing next year. I'm hoping. Excellent. So, <laughs> thanks for the time, guys. Thanks for having me on. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. All right, so because uh, it's time for the outro. Um, thank you, Brian, for taking the time to talk to us about your book, and uh, to our viewers out there. Um, let us know what's your favorite artist from the past that you enjoyed a lot that's helped influence your games let us know in the comments below we'll put also the links that was talked about in the comment in the description below so you can find and 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 get this great book and um yeah 
take care. Uh, happy New Year, and we'll see you in 2022.